Hi, I'm Naila. And I'm Caitlin. And this is Real, Real TV. TV. We're here recapping our favorite TV shows. And the top five shows you should be watching on Netflix today. Today. So the first thing that you should be watching on Netflix is Luke Cage. Oh, Luke yes. Cage. He's a Marvel superhero, bulletproof black man. How ironic. ironic. Hey, what? <laughs> yes, but um, bulletproof black man. Basically, the way he became a superhero, um, he was originally a cop. Um, his name was Carl Lucas. He was framed and he went to prison and they promised him time off of his sentence if he fought other inmates and underwent uh, some type of like experiment which in the future made him a superhero. Mm -hmm. So he's fighting crime in Harlem, is a real black power, Simon with bias, real nice. I just, it's a really good show to watch. Yes. I don't know, I guess it kind of depends on if you're into superheroes, but it also ties into a lot of things going on today, such as police brutality, um, corruption, yeah, corruption, community policing, different things like that. So it's a real dope show to watch. Yes. What's the next show? Um, The Get Down. That's your show. The Get Down. This is my show right here. Okay, I finished this show in an entire day. So basically, um, it's a, whole, a one day. Yes, one day. Wow. Yes, I just binge watched it. That's what you you gotta do it sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And basically, it's centered around two specifically important characters, a wordsmith and a grandmaster, which is Zeke and Shaolin. And basically, this story centers around their journey of going through, um, basically, them trying to figure out clues of how to reach the ultimate rapping slash DJ capacity that they can. Is Jaden Smith in it? I yes. think. Okay, he yeah. Is, yeah, he is. So yeah, that's um that's to get down. It's a really good show. It's centered around the sixties. Yeah, like sixties, seventies. Yeah, they're like teenagers. Or, yeah, they're and teenagers, they're te right? Yeah, they're yeah. teenagers in Harlem. Mm -hmm. So yes, see Harlem. Mm -hmm. That's to get Trendy. down. Harlem. Yes. Okay, so um the third one is a little more serious. It's a documentary. Actually, it was made by her name is Ava. I think it's Devonery. Is that how you pronounce it? Devonery. Devonery. Either way, that she has a black girl Barbie. She's a famous director, and she also um, directed Soma. So look out for her. Um, the Thirteenth. How would you describe it? I would describe it as basically kind of just starting where it ended slavery, kind of like what happened through slavery, kind of how black people evolved um, throughout um, America's time, and um, it's specifically focused on like mass incarceration and just how like black people. Kind of came to be like the activists that we are today yeah and it also focuses a lot on reagan's reign um, his presidency mm -hmm. and uh, i believe it's called the school to prison pop pipeline yeah so yeah it's really important i think all of our people should watch it um, and all of our people who are not our people should watch it as well, as well just to be Informed. educated on history yes and i what's really cool about it is i think it kind of shows where a lot of the negative negative stigmas that are placed upon African Americans or just people of color, period, come from, and how um, this idea of us being lazy, uneducated, um, monstrous, monstrous, rapists. You need to look out for that. Yeah. You should look and look up and see why do they call black men rapists? Mm -hmm. Look it up. But uh, just a lot of the negative connotations placed on um, people of color, period, where it came from, and that it's fictional. So check that out. All right. Next oh, show. A Girl Like Me. All right. Um, so I'll be talking about this. I watched this um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit more on the doc – it's another documentary. It's a little bit more on the sad side. Um, it's kind of centered around um, bullying and um, how hard it is to be, you know, a girl in, in high school, a girl in society, period, and how just pressured we feel. Um, basically, the documentary goes um, from two sides. Um, it goes from the victim and it goes from the uh, victimizer. So you get to see a little bit, um, you, more, you more get to see the victim, but you get to see a little bit of the victimizer and like how she became a bully and who she is today. Kind of, yeah. So, um, Basically, the story goes, um, they used to be friends, and that's kind of how it always usually starts. They used to be friends. High school came. Um, one got popular, one didn't, and one just decides to just start being rude to an old best friend, and um, the old best friend makes a new friend, and basically he decides that we're going to catch this on camera so that she can know what she's doing and so that we can show the world 
what she's doing because it's it's terrible. So um, every time uh, the, the bully encountered, um, her name is Jess, the victim is Jess, um, every time she encountered Jess, she would always be recorded. So um, throughout the documentary, you can see um, times of when she's being bullied and like how hurtful that the bully is saying and just it's it's honestly really sad i cried and i don't usually cry during movies but it, it made me cry but the ending i will say the ending is very positive and it's uplifting and it's very motivational so i say um go watch it go watch that and the next one okay we obviously like documentaries a lot yes. can't help it is amanda knox now if you're not familiar with amanda knox you can either start off with this documentary or you can go watch Lifetime Movie, which is also on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Really good. H Hayden Panettiere plays Amanda Knox. Mm -hmm. Just a little background. Basically, Amanda Knox is this girl, a white girl, and she traveled to Italy just to like study abroad. Mm -hmm. And she found an Italian lover and was kind of just living her life. But basically, she killed her roommate. We Allegedly. Won't, we won't say, you know, like what happened in between that like from her studying abroad to her killing her roommate you just have to go watch but it happens her roommate ends up dead so um basically it kind of goes from her journey of like what she did and like um basically kind of points of views from family and friends mm -hmm. and um like her time in jail possibly even like what she went through and, and how she felt about the whole situation yeah, so she, i think she wrote a book too mm -hmm. uh-huh yeah. yeah it's actually really interesting um not saying don't study abroad. I still didn't study abroad. But when I watched it, I was kind of like, uh, yeah. what? Like, yeah. dang, you really don't know the people that you're living with. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's with anything. Mm -hmm. I think, um, have you ever seen The Roommate? Yes. Yes. I remember when I watched The Roommate, I was like, well, you know what? College. College. Not for me. I don't need to go because that girl was crazy. She was crazy. But, hey, it just goes to show, like, you know, know who you're living with. Mm -hmm. Know who you're um, in, uh, interacting with. And just be cautious. Yeah, be very cautious. I think a lot of times um, with our generation, we tend to get pretty comfortable, and we just think we know each other. Mm -hmm. And but you don't know a person. You, this is how I think about it. You only know so much based off of what that person is willing to show you. Mm -hmm. So you might be meeting somebody's representative. Yes, the same. I agree. <laughs> but yes. Um, and the next segment we're going to talk about um, is. Oh, okay. So, Real Housewives of Atlanta, that's my show. I've been watching it since I was a kid. <laughs> um, it comes back on Sunday. So, uh, in the next episode, we'll be able to tell you what happened. But basically, the way it left off, there's just so much drama, so much going on. Let's see. Kenya has a new man, a younger guy. She's still building um, her house, more manor. Uh, Sheree is introduced. She's back on the show. And she's possibly getting back with um, her ex-husband, Bob. We also have Kim Fields. I don't know if y'all are familiar with her. But um, she played Tootie in, like, an older show, probably, like, I think it was from, like, the 70s. But more recently, she was in Living Single. Yeah. So she's on there with her husband. There's a little scandal. They're trying to say that he's gay. But, I mean, I think he's just a little feminine. He's not gay. Um, Phaedra's husband, Apollo, um, he's in jail, obviously. And in this upcoming uh, episode, apparent, or season, apparently she's fully divorced from him. So that's over with. She was also kind of battling with uh, whether or not she wanted to take our sons to go visit him in prison. And am I crazy? Wasn't he in prison here? I'm pretty sure. I don't know if he still is, but at one point he was here in Lexington. So oh, there's that. Let's see. Who else did we talk about? Oh, Candy. She was pregnant. She had recently got married to her husband, Todd. She's uh, ready to have a baby. Um, and then Nene, she comes on the couple's trip. So she's there with her husband, Greg. And that's pretty much it. Portia's in it too, but she doesn't she doesn't really have that much of a storyline, you know. It was kind of surrounded around um, you know, her career, which is not I mean, black women with a career, she owns her own business, that's cool. So there's that. But she didn't really have a man to kind of focus on, which is sad, but that's kinda of how the show is. It's surrounded around men and family. Yeah. She also doesn't have kids, so it was surrounded around her little sister who is actually pregnant and about to have a baby. And um, the trip looks pretty good, so watch that on Sunday. Yes, yes. So I will talk about my favorite Wednesday night show, Empire. Basically, um, the season has already started, but we'll recap last season. Last season, um, 
Cookie, uh, Cookie and Lucius sort of like got back together, but then they ended up breaking up because Lucius had to marry Anika so that she couldn't testify against him. Um, Hakeem uh, impregnated Anika actually, and um, Anika killed Rhonda. Yes, and uh, uh, Rhonda died. Yeah, unfortunately. It basically, the end of the season kind of left at a cliffhanger because we didn't know who got pushed over, who mm-hmm. died. But um, it was Rhonda who passed away, unfortunately. That's so sad because Anika is evil. She's, ugh, Anika is just disgusting. Terrible. But yes, what else happened? Um, Hakeem also got left at the altar. Um, he didn't get to marry someone who he actually really loved. Mm-hmm. So he kind of fell into a deep depression. And um, Jamal actually got shot so like you know we're trying to figure out you know what he's about to do with his you know voice he's trying to find it again and um apparently now this season they're having Hakeem and this other dude who that Tiana is kind of talking to they have some type of beef and um, wait tell him who it is who's playing the guy Romeo well Romeo he's on Empire he is on Empire (laughs) and that I, I don't know if you guys know Romeo but that's uh Master P's son yeah and um i used to have a crush on him back in the day me that too was, that was my babe mm-hmm. um i would always pretend that he was singing cinderella to me because i felt like it's cinderella yeah but yes we're not the only ones the angela simmons had a crush on him too, oh yeah. but that's another story that's a whole other mm. story that we now she's pregnant and now yeah. but mm. anyway yes so okay. yes so yeah they're having a little rap beef tiana actually writes a diss track to both of them saying i don't want either of you guys so back up off me mm-hmm. um basically yeah so um anika had her baby uh actually she had to have it early she went into shock after pushing Rhonda off the cliff of the building mm-hmm. so yeah insane there's that and then um yeah so we're just following cookie and lion now they're having a war over who's going to own empire um jamal is finding his voice and apparently he's got a little boo now so hmm. we'll, we'll note that um in the next coming but, episode okay, am i crazy is cookie dating hayden you know they're kind of they have a thing but they're not okay. officially dating okay. yet they're just you know they're kind of just like okay. yeah which is so crazy like the contrast because she's so he's she's so hood and he's, and so, he's like, so like proper he took her to the opera yeah and she was like she was like what am I doing here? What What am I? Do you see this dress? Yeah, she on? was dressed to go to a club, mm-hmm. and they was talking bad about her at the opera. And she left them all speechless. Let me tell you, she shut everyone down mm-hmm. at that opera. That's that. See, and that's a note. Let me just say something, guys. If you're gonna take us somewhere, just let us know. Maybe the attire or something, because I could think that you know, going to the movies and you trying to take me to an opera. Yeah. And I'll have on jeans, and I look crazy, and I get talked about, and then now, just the now, way my life is, I gotta go off on you. Yeah, Sorry. It's my self esteem. I'm sad, and since I'm sad, I gotta take it out on you. Mm-hmm. Accidentally. But yes, so dudes, write that down. Note that. Write it down. Take a picture. At least give your girl the attire of what she should wear if you're gonna surprise her. Yeah, a, a notice, and Something. don't please. Personally, I'm a makeup girl, mm-hmm. so don't. Randomly, hey, want to go catch lunch in 15 minutes? No, because most likely, if I'm not around anybody, I look a mess. That's what I look like in real life. No, she doesn't. She just, <laughs> it's a girl thing. But it no, is, it is. But just give us notice. That's all we want. Yes. But yeah, all right, guys, that is Real TV for you guys. We will see you next week. Thank you for joining Nyla and I. And we'll see you next week on Real Real TV.